Welcome back to Leave It on the Dance Floor. I hope everybody's listening because today Eliana Walmsley is here, one of the original minis that came into Dance Moms and changed the world. Yes. So nice to me. Well, I am a nice person. Well, it's I know. It's a show. I know. You just got make a TV show. You're complimenting me. Of course. Of course. <laughs> you were great, little mini. I had a half hour private with you then. I stayed in their room for two and a half hours. I think it was even longer than that. It was late for my <laughs> meeting that I drove to Anaheim and had a meeting and they didn't show up because I was too late. I just switched it from like lunch to dinner later. What was the big deal? And they were like, no, it's too late. We they were meet. pissed. Oh, dang. They were more than that. Oh. It was for it was for a dance. And that's my fault. It was a dance wear line. You screwed it all up. Yeah. All right, Eliana. Yes. Dance moms. You, yes. You watched it on television. I was literally such a huge fan of the show. It was so bad to the point where I would like watch t- way too many clips on YouTube. My mom was like, "You have to stop. Like this is this is all weird. Like you're watching too much." It was just all I did all day, every day. So when I found out there was like a chance that I like we mainly did it as a joke they put you guys put out like a flyer i think we're like new team like casting i even remember first time i met you do you remember when you came to world dance pageant and you did like i was there that's going on right now i have students oh is it actually right now it's going on today the the interviews and the classes yes oh my gosh well i was there and you were like were you in it yes did- i did i got i got first runner up that year second is I the know, first I to know, lose know, can we all I say know. it together oh, no. Second is the first to lose. No, guys. Oh. First runner up. What is that crap? That's second. Okay. I, I tried my best. Okay, but... but wait, were you, you were in it. You were a mini, a junior. What I was a you? mini. So I don't think I judged the minis. No, I, judged I don't think you did. I judged the juniors and the seniors. And then somebody else did the minis and the teens. Mm-hmm. But I, I saw you there and I, and I asked for a photo with you. And, and I was so crushed because you were like, yeah, but you have to go really fast. Like, I think you were in a rush. So I understood. But the photo I have, oh my gosh, I'll have to find that. It's like super blurry. And I was like, I just met Abby Lee. Oh my God. And I was like internally freaking out. And I was like physically freaking out to my mom as well, too. It, but how many years later were you with me every day? Only, only like, I think like one year. It was like not that long, like one year later wow. around there, which See? is crazy. Dreams do come true. No, I literally, let me tell you, I manifested being on the show. And here's why. When after I auditioned, you know, I didn't make it originally. It was like every single mini in the final cut, except for me and that one girl that was like a crybaby. It was everyone but us two. Okay. You know, it was like Ari, Alexis. So I was bummed about that from the LA audition. And so I was, oh, I was so sad. But then, it's so funny, is I went and I started telling people that I was actually on the show. And I wasn't. <laughs> they were like... She lied, people. Guys, I... She made it up. How I old were you? I, I think I was freshly eight, like freshly eight. I think okay. I just turned eight. And it was right. so funny because I was in like one ballet class and he was like, tell me a cool fact about yourself. And I was like, I'm on Dance Moms. <laughs> and I was well, not. No, but they filmed the audition. So you probably were on it. Like, But I said clip. I was in episodes. And then I said oh. this to another group of kids at my school and they're like, well, where's the episode? And I go, oh, they deleted it. They deleted the episode. Good answer. I mean, honestly, but Eliana, to... you did come in and you weren't in that first original mini no. group. You came in like, what, maybe three or four episodes into that. There was kind of like a little bit of an evolution. Yes. With those Look kids. at my face. I'm shocked. I didn't know that. I thought it I was, was you and Lily. No. And Ariana. No. It, remember, you had like, it was this one. I don't even remember. I think her name was Mia or something. She was a lot there taller. Was a... There was a girl named Kendall that was Kendall Faye. on for a week. And mm-hmm. then there was Yeah, we couldn't have two Kendalls. Brought, it just makes sense. There was a mother that brought three kids with her. Oh. Yes. And then she oh, Coco. Co- oh, I love were, Coco. I'm still I know, friends with her. They were brats, those kids. I remember them in that, you know, the den where you put your stuff. There were yeah. like mirrors and plugs. Yeah. And they were just evil. Wait, really? Yes. They were evil to me and to their mother. Because I've heard different well, from them. <laughs> I remember, you, didn't you put their mom in a monkey suit? And like, Eliana, you, want... you were on the show. <laughs> did I have the monkey suit or did production? <laughs> Come on. I, well, see, see, she's sitting here, people. And all the people listening and watching <laughs> out there, this kid. I'm like just as naive so as well everyone else. And 
adorable and sitting here well dressed, and she still thinks it was me. It wasn't me. <laughs> well, that's interesting, though. Why would I, I don't, have time to put your mother in a monkey aired. suit? Somebody's mother. That well, was never aired. No, it wasn't. Anybody? But I saw photos because I was just with Coco maybe like a month ago, and she was talking about it, and she was explaining to me the whole drama, you know, with Kaylee like taking off her jacket. You know, do you remember that? How it was like a big thing. How she was like too good to wear the jacket so she like took the ja but that was all fake yeah. and stuff like from what i heard that it was like she was just like hot and asked permission like take the jacket off but they made it look like she was like i'm too good for the jacket oh i just well, maybe that's why i thought she was a brat mm -hmm. it was no so yeah. i was explaining that i mean again i don't know what's true and what's not i wasn't there but it's just so funny how like things get aired so differently on the uh -huh. show than i mean i mean everyone that's been on the show understands that of course do they I don't think some of them do. Really? Some of them are so twisted, they don't get it. Do you and think? It, yeah, and I don't understand well, I why know that it's like, like the kids were, like now, I was always fighting for them no, to look I know. better, to get better costumes, to, to be better, and to not do some stupid dance, to do this dance instead. Like, I was always no, their advocate. Was, yeah, exactly. Always for them to look good. I don't want anyone to have a top <laughs> fall down. I don't, like, I want to put their best foot forward. Why did they not think that? Like, no, I, that's another thing I, that confuses me is how people are constantly going against you like you were the problem because you were not. You're right. You were I, always advocating for us to have a better experience it, and like, no and when, mom's fighting. When, when? Yeah, no, literally, yes. which is what it was, you know, the show was all about. You were always trying to help us. It was never, I mean, of course, you, I mean, you have to do stuff for this. You have to make it interesting. Well, so, of course, you'd be like, oh, like, you know, you'd yell at us sometimes, but you have to. That's your job. A, thank That's you. That's literally that your job. That is my job. I remember <laughs> uh, Justin Siva always coming, do your job. Just do your job. Just do your job. I mean, it's and true. And I'm like, okay, you're doing a ballet duet. Oop, we're going to and <laughs> it's like, okay, I did my job. I would have loved to have had a ballet duet. I know, just I know. put that out there. Just putting that out that there. That would have been I, good. Or a ballet solo or... Even if I was in like that one ballet group dance, remember that Daniel did? It was like the red bow. Yes. I would, red violin. I would have given yes. anything to be in that group dance. Oh. I mean, it gave me a solo. So I'm like, you know, I can't complain. And that was like, that was one of my better solos. That Remember Am I Enough? That was that was good. I don't know. I just saw some There's clips so many of you dances. the other day. And it was one of your first ones. Was I it think Sing For You? I was much more involved than Gianna was. Like, I was really in there doing it with mm -hmm. you. You know how I used to have to teach you guys in the lobby? Oh, I remember because that. Because yeah, they yeah. wouldn't let the minis in the studio? No. I'm telling you this. This is how it went. Those mothers and those older kids were so freaked out that these little minis came in because they were hungry. They wanted it. They loved me. And we were they, good. And they were good. There you go. And they were really good. And I remember teaching you guys in the lobby. But I, I was watching one solo of yours, and I was like, She's so good because I'm watching kids now. You mm -hmm. know, I'm teaching now still yeah. on Zoom and I'm choreographing. And it's like, they were so good. They were, I, mean, I will look back and I'll be like, considering like we really did learn those dances in like two days. But, like, you know, with barely any practice, you know. And and people walking around and light people and sound people and miking you and not miking Cameras you. Cameras all up in our face. Yes. And remember, we were so young, we could only film a certain amount of hours. So remember, on Pyramid Day, Pyramid Day would take hours. So by that time, Pyramid was done. Four we would, hours. Four of hours just to film the pyramid. Standing, standing there. there. Oh. And we could have been dancing. But then, see, by the time Pyramid was over... If we wouldn't have any time to learn the dance. Right. The if we'd be done, go. they'd be like, bye, you're out. And I'm like, okay, well, we have dances to learn. And they're well, like, that sucks. I know. <laughs> but like, that's why a lot of times we needed you to come back at night after yeah. we wrapped and take class because then we, we would, could put something in the dance yes. that was in class. Well, I remember because there would be times where like, so I'm trying to think. I remember Ari one week, she had an audition and we learned a whole chunk of the group dance while she was gone, while we were at class and stuff. Gianna was like, hey, just come really quickly. And we all learned it literally in the lobby. Remember, you had real classes, too, with real people just, like, walking uh, I know. around. To pay my rent. I know. Rent was expensive there. At Santa Monica, like, that area, like, I can only imagine. It was $29,000 a month. Oh, my. Rent. Are you kidding? And I spent 420 building out the studio. Oh, it was but it was beautiful. beautiful. It was beautiful. It was huge, especially for L.A. Like, you'd never see studios like that. I know, that. with the floors done right everything the, yes the, so it was it was a beautiful studio it thank really you sweetheart. was i appreciate that because no, all the moms you know built new houses and i built that studio and then <laughs> moved out of it gone 
I, re- oh, I don't know if you ever remember, like, all the minis. We would all, like, after filming, we would go and we would hop up on your bed and we would watch, like, Netflix and little kids shows. So we would all, the like... The bed in the back? Yeah, that you st- like, you're where you stayed. We would all go and we oh would, like, God. hop on your bed and watch, like, TV. Was... I didn't know that. No, we always did. I didn't know that. Well, that's cute. Mm-hmm. Well, like, when you weren't there and then we would always... You know, oh my gosh, I remember this one time. For fun, we all put on your jewelry, like your bracelets. And then we, we heard you coming and we were like, oh my God, oh my God, she's coming. And we like were trying to like get them off because we heard you coming because we put them like all your bracelets, like all the way up here. Like we literally oh, that's just. cute. I wish we had pictures of that. <laughs> I know, but I was like, oh no, she's going to like get mad at us no. for putting on her jewelry. No, 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 no. Unless it was real. Oh, no. no, yeah. And we like broke it or something. Yeah, but no, fake just, stuff. Honestly. Just for fun. We were just like, oh my gosh, like we have like the jewelry. See, there were good times. There were funny times. No, like that's like a core memory for me. Like oh, just watching, like we would literally put on Netflix and watch like Barbie or something. Just. In your on your bed, just all of us. I'm pretty sure there is a photo of that. I'll have to find it. It was just so cute. Yeah, that is cute. And all those are minis. those are good times when you weren't at each other's throat, competing against each other. And I never really cared though. I never was like. I mean, I was competitive, but I never was like. I need to beat them. I literally was like. I mean, whatever happens, happens. I'm on the TV show. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, of course, like I had my mom in my ear. Like you have to win, but right. she's gotten a lot better now. Like we'll look back, and I'm like. I mean, of course, everything's so edited and produced as well. But I'll look back and I'm like, that was bad, mom. I'm like, that was really bad what you said. And, and what she did she like, say? And she's like, no, I know. But she was, we were just talking about how kind of with like her, the show in a way for like a while really kind of altered our relationship, I would say, because she started to get the mindset of like being, because, you know, you have to have a different mindset when you're actually on the show of, you know, constantly being like, you know, kids this and kids that, like, my kid did this wrong, or, you know, because she would advocate for me, advocate for me a lot, but there would also be times where she'd be like, you know, she messed this up, and she messed that up, and it started to, she started to get, like, that out of the show as well, too, which was really tough, but she's gotten out of that now, which is good, and our relationship has been, like, a lot better, but that was, like, one thing I will say is, like, she stayed kind of in that dance mom mindset, like, after after the show, because she had, you know, she had to be like that for so long, that she just got it she got used to it that's interesting to hear and i think our listeners and people viewing this have a different take on that Mm -hmm. so your mom had to be tough on you on the show she had to constantly be critiquing you yeah and they try to get them to critique other kids and so then show ends you're with your mom you're in the car going somewhere and she's still Mm -hmm. like all over you about this and about that like she's being filmed yeah Ah, interesting and i don't think she she wasn't doing it because she's like i'm gonna be mean to eliana you know it was just she was so used to it from doing it for so long that it just became the normal i wonder if you know what i mean moms well i don't know i think joey always told kendall she was beautiful like a hundred times a day Mm -hmm. so i'm sure she kept doing that stuff yeah (laughs) i was like well your mom was tougher on you but i always felt but i mean when i spoke to your mom this is what i always said and this i want to get into about your social media platform and how you're doing right now Mm -hmm. uh so your mom i could talk to her about fabric costumes fashion i could talk to her about travel i could talk to her about education public school private school blah 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 blah. a million things food dinner whatever your mom shooting a youtube video uploading it editing it first uploading it Doing all that jazz, that is not Yolanda. She doesn't do that though. I know. So when you went from zero subscribers oh, yeah. on YouTube, having one and letting it to kind of dissipate and it just went away, and then starting a new one with zero followers, and you have now how many tell our listeners? Two million. I hit two million like a few weeks ago, which is really exciting. Congratulations. Thank you so, so much. Two million followers, subscribers, I should say. Two yeah. million subscribers on youtube that was fast yeah it was fast to get well probably fast to get to five hundred thousand. yeah then after that it just kind of keeps happening Mm -hmm. okay i didn't grow that fast and i was just telling gianna on the bus instead of working with her on dance studio business or scheduling or flyers for an upcoming event Mm -hmm. i should have been sitting next to jojo working on a youtube channel smart I didn't do that. Remember her YouTube, it was so successful because she was really the only one doing it at that time. 
and she was YouTube videos. filming it, editing it, uploading her stuff. I remember her on the bus going up and down the aisle, like the Wi-Fi is out, the Wi-Fi, who has the password? Who? They're like, she was like, wow, I would like shut up and sit down, kid, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so tell me how that happened so quickly. So I thing is, I had a YouTube channel. I started in 2017, but my mom and I knew nothing about it. We were the most naive people to YouTube, like literally knew zilch about it. Was it was just this thing that kids did. Yeah, yeah. it was we were like, oh, it's YouTube. We were it was so naive that we didn't even know you could make money off of it yet. So the thing is, there was this guy that reached out to me and was like, listen, like I'll do everything for you. Like I'll film it, I'll upload it. it upload it like all that stuff like edit it all those crazy things so we're like oh well that sounds like a great deal he's like i'll do it for free and we were like well that's okay yes i mean i would love to start a youtube channel so we filmed all these really cute videos like one of them was like actually a tour of your la studio like random like food reviews like eating liquid nitrogen ice cream it was really cute videos and they did well like for the time like my most viewed video got i think it was actually the tour i did of your studio got to like a million views which for me was like a lot of the time because i had like Is there 10 percent of that <laughs> well listen mm-hmm. listen i didn't know you made money until- I, either did i, I you mm-hmm. know what i was so naive i was like how does youtube find you to pay you yeah like how how does this how do you get this so money? you were just like me because oh, no idea stupid until my friend was like oh you have ads on your videos i bet you made like a good amount from that video and i was like what i don't know what you're talking about so now i'm just gonna ask it yeah it's probably etiquette wise not appropriate but your sole source of income your main source of income now is your youtube channel yeah definitely mm-hmm. and i make the most on youtube out of like every other platform right and but do you also do like do you have the reels deal like i know somebody that makes 30 grand a month on their reels i did i not i don't have the deal anymore so i already finished that but i did get, have that the at one point. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you know, I don't think they're paying people on Reels anymore. I think that actually ended. Like, Instagram directly, it's only, I think, if you get a deal now, actually, oh. which I already did. Yeah. Yes, it ended uh, in April of this year. And so you also have brand deals. Yes. And is that your agent that does that? Or mm-hmm. no? She, you have a brand yeah. manager. Well, I have, it's definitely my manager. She helps, you know, negotiate all those things. Like, they'll come in usually to my business email and she'll go through like all the all the kind of like money stuff because so i'm like business, i don't like to get the, into that the business emails go to her she opens she has emails. access to it so it is she my yes okay. so yes. does your mom mm-hmm. okay and so uh, if there's ever like an email that let's say like comes into just like my direct email my mom will like send it over and be like is this legit or not right 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 mm-hmm. and do you have uh do you also have a post office box no I don't have a P.O. box. No, so when people send you makeup, perfume, that stuff like that. That just goes to my house. It does. It, do, yeah. it does. It goes to your house. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's public. So speaking of your house, you live here in California with your mom. I do. Yes. And you have a beautiful house, an apartment. Uh, house. You have your I've, own ha- I bought my house in December of 2022. So Did you hear that, that folks? That was exciting. And how old are you? I was 15 at the time. I'm 16 now. 15 and bought her own house. And that's the best thing you could do. I work, I mean, I worked hard. I did. You know, I'm not some, like, trust fun kid. That sounds mean. I don't want to be mean. Like, no, you know, no, I, no. Didn't have, I know. You I worked for it. Mm-hmm, I didn't have everything handed to me on a silver platter, which I think a lot of people think that I did. That, you know, I grew up no, super No, because your like, mom and dad have a house that you could go live in. Yeah, in and Colorado. And shoot YouTube. You don't need to be here. No, right. Right. Yeah. I, I had to work hard for what I did. So, I mean, it was nice... Having that accomplishment made me feel really like, okay, maybe this is like, actually, you know, like it, I was really proud of myself. Well, so. whew, I'm glad you said that because for the past year, I've been telling everybody that you bought your own house. So I didn't want to be. <laughs> that you were like saying something that was not the case. Yeah, like a little kid saying she was on Dance Moms when she wasn't. Uh, yeah, no, but you know but what I mean. But I manifest, <laughs> but see, technically I'm not lying anymore. No, because I, act- I was on it. You were on it. You were on it. But at the time. Right. So. <laughs> Coming into the studio the very first time, you booked a private lesson with me. I did. Your mother contacted me, the studio and begged them, begged them, begged them, and I was well, yeah, busy. because I didn't, because she didn't want me going at first. She was like, "Nah, like you know, they were, they didn't even like want you on the show. Like, why do you want to go over there and take class?" I was like, "Please, I just, I want to take a class and stuff." And so she finally gave in. So that's what yeah, she called, literally called the studio. And you had a solo. I did. And I completely redid it. 
I was like, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? What? This doesn't work with this. It was like a period piece. Yeah. From a Broadway show. Yeah. What, what was it? It was remember? Satan's Little Lamb. You know. Okay. Satan's mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so, a good solo. Yes. And, and I was like, she needs to do this. She needs to do that. She, you know, because yeah. people, it's easy to take a really good ki- kid and see a dance and go, well, I would do this or mm-hmm. I would do that. Let's change this. Let's change that. Because it's different eyes yeah. seeing it. Right. So for anyone that's interested, I doctor solos. That's what it's called. And you can take from me on Zoom or in person. And we go through your solo that your teacher taught you. And then I go, mm, this staging's not good. You need to face the other way. You're not going to do a side aerial with your back to the audience. You're not going to start facing the back. Things like that. And uh, it's easy because it's different eyes. Yeah. You know, your own dance teachers at home have their pet peeves. Yeah. But they harp on, harp on, harp on. Mm-hmm. I have a completely different view of it. Yeah. And I'm looking at it as a judge would look at it. So it's different than your dance teachers. I mean, what what you did was great. And I was just so, I was just happy to be there. Number right. one, I was like, I'm having a private lesson with Abby Lee Miller right In now. In this studio, yes. I was like, this. it was just so surreal for me. I mean, obviously I had been to the like studio before the actual audition, but I was just like, this is so crazy. And then, I mean, I did the solo with all the changes you made and it like won everything. So, oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. I won, na- I won nationals with it, actually. You did? Mm-hmm. Okay, good for you, so, sweetie. I didn't know that. It was, I mean, that was exciting. But, I mean, it was a, it was a cute solo. Oh, it was really cute. Okay, Except for so, when I went to Utah and did that solo there. <laughs> they were not pleased about that. Well, you know, they're in another world. Eh? <laughs> well, because it was called Satan's Little Lambs. I know. We, we, we got we to, gotta, you know, move on from them. Okay, so now you're suddenly, you're on the show. Oh, my god. And gosh. I remember a day... I left in a car. I called an Uber, which now I can't even use Uber because of the handicap in the wheelchair. But I called an Uber and left because they made me pick two minis to stay and the rest had to leave. Oh, yes. I was horrified. We were at, we were at competition. In the dressing room. Do you remember room. that? I remember. I, I hated. I loved you all. I wanted to keep everybody. Yeah. I, it was horrific for me to do that to those little kids. You know what's interesting is I just watched that episode a few weeks ago and it was just heart wrenching because how are you going to cut? You were saying like, how am I going to cut these minis who have done nothing wrong? All they want is to be here. They're good. Did I say that? Yeah. In the in the program, Mm -hmm. I say they've done nothing wrong. Like yeah, no, you said that quote to to be gone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To get the axe. Nobody did anything bad. And the moms, well, you know, that's why they didn't want them because the moms liked me and they did what I told them to do. Yeah. We all were like obedient because you all saw these <laughs> older kids making money, successful. Yeah. Premieres, this, that, the all other thing. Those crazy like, things. We're yeah. going to listen to Abby because she got these kids here to mm-hmm. where they are now. We're going to do what she says. Mm-hmm. And of course, how are you going to cut any of the, le- of the elites who have been with you for years? Well, I could have cut a lot of them. <laughs> I, gone. But I think once you turn 14, they should have been gone. Like it, a new kid should have come in. I was just talking to John about that. Yeah. So when you turn 14, poof, be gone. And a new kid comes in. So Dang, it would never you're be just out. <laughs> but it would never be a whole new cast. It would just be a revolving door constantly. Mm-hmm. And then I mean, this way sense. people wouldn't be like all like, ah, they'd know it was coming. We'd have a big celebration. Bye. Yeah. And then a new kid would come in and that kid would have to like Yeah. In hindsight, do you think looking back they wanted to cut most of the minis because the mothers weren't camera friendly? Uh, <laughs> I think that the I'm gonna say it. I think that the OGs went to their attorneys and went to the network and said, it's us or the minis. <gasps> do you think? Yeah, absolutely. We didn't do anything wrong. Uh, I'm like, you didn't. Mm. But, you know. I was well, so the nervous. whole point of bringing the minis on was to like, keep it going. Yeah. To, to, to have a little bit of longe- uh, longevity like, and yeah. keep the show going longer and eventually. Yes, I, that's exactly what I wanted. Little ones in there to the grow up and to graduated anyway. Yeah. Ex- exactly. If the show kept going, they would have been seniors and graduated uh-huh. and still competing every weekend. I mean, come on, that's stupid. So I did want the longevity. Plus, I also liked to work with children that looked up to me and took what I said as gospel and did it <laughs> and did yeah. what I was telling them to do. Obedient children. Yeah, we were. Well, I don't know if obedient is the word, but. They wanted to win. Yeah. They wanted to learn. They wanted to get better. They were like sponges. <laughs> That's a good analogy. Because you weren't my students originally. You all no. came from somewhere else. So a lot of the things that I was saying, you hadn't heard before. No. A lot of the things that I said, you did hear before. 
-hmm. you know, but there were new things and it was like, oh, I didn't know that. And probably your mother was like, oh, nobody ever told her that before. Oh, yeah, no, so many things. So many just stage presence type things like making sure my feet are pointed after I do a jump and I roll to the floor and, you know, never starting to the back and holding the pose for like three, four seconds. Just so many little tiny details that you would really like never really think of or pay attention to that much, but just have so much like change and just help so much the devil is in the details that's very true but that's why we won that's true just the little things like that just make such a big difference you know what i the mean posture rolling around that's a big one. Oh yeah mm-hmm. on the roll. Mm-hmm. i've been corrected on that a few times by you i think i've been correct on a lot of things but now, it's fine. a lot of people think it's the show the show the show and that's how i am with the kids and blah 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 but we've also traveled together mm-hmm. so outside of a show there are kids you went to Mexico with me. Yeah. Kalani went. Yeah. We traveled together. Mm-hmm. You got paid. I paid your mom for that trip. Yeah. For the work you did and assisting me and her mom selling the merch and all that. And Kalani got paid. Mm-hmm. Uh, a guy went with us to teach hip hop. Yes. He got paid. I have never been paid for that trip. Are you serious? $27,000 he kept. The guy. He was going to wire it to my bank account, and I've never gotten Wait, it. Wait, yes, 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 that that guy, right? Yes, Kevin oh. Anybody knows him in Mexico? Watch I out. I remember he disappeared. He went off the grid, and you were like, where someone find I, I went back that. down with an attorney. Oh, my went God. Went back to Mexico to find him. Oh, you went to, oh, dang. Yes. You went it, physically there. I went physically there, and it turns out oh his father God. is like a, uh, something to do with the government. Oh, like something Ooh, to do with construction or like uh, surveying and stuff, but for the government, works for oh. the government. Yeah. So I wasn't getting it. Well, I money. remember that whole drama. That was just the craziest thing. I was like, what is happening? And driving me to Cancun or something. And it was supposed to be like, it was supposed to be 30 hour, minutes. 30 minutes away. It was three, four hours in the we car. In the car. For just me to get out. And why I didn't just take the money with me, I don't know. Because mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want to have that money here on vacation. Just wire it to my bank account Uh well i remember that well i think it's i think it's also important for our viewers and our listeners to know because obviously you've had trouble with money as far as legally and you know that you've paid for that and you're still paying for that every day you don't you don't handle money on any event no and i work events on the east coast with you and i can attest to that you don't see the money you don't touch the money you don't have anything to do with money. Ever. Well, I'm out so, on the floor teaching the dance class. And yeah. The drills and, are know, assisting just, me. It's the moms. And uh, okay. those moms, they did their job. Everything was great. And uh, everybody got paid. And then what was left, I get. And uh, never got it. You traveled with me. I did. We had fun. That was fun. I remember in a restaurant, you you were hysterical laughing. And really? giggling and carrying on. I don't know what we were eating or what was happening. Did someone give me like a pina colada on accident? No, <laughs> never, never. Maybe I'm kidding, a virgin. I'm kidding, maybe a I'm, virgin kidding I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, of course so not. So you were just in Bora Bora. For my birthday. That was, oh my gosh, that was the most insane trip ever. Like I will say, it looks exactly like what you think it would look like. Like in the, well, the photos. Name, when it sounds like Bora Bora. Like it's just, just beautiful. In this island and it's just tropical and beautiful. Oh, it was insane it just didn't even feel real is that where you wanted to go or did somebody offer you a trip to there no i wanted to go there no so you paid for that you did Mm -hmm. that yourself nice thing is we got we definitely got like great benefits the resorts were really really nice to us but no we we paid there was no like offer anything but they did we did get like definitely some good amenities and some of the kids though are always away posting and i'm like how do they get these trips all the time Mm -hmm. well there's some trips it's just honestly like people directly reaching out at least like trips that i've had like fully paid for it's just direct so I don't you know. reach out to them and say i want to go there no they just reach sometimes they reach out to me just oh nice mm-hmm. so okay that's nice. so while we're talking about niceties and fun <laughs> can we talk about the boyfriend <laughs> still yes. the boyfriend yes 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 okay. been together for quite some time no we're still doing we're still together we're still great i I must say, I love him. I think he's adorable. I think he's a nice kid from the first moment I met him. Oh, I I have to tell him this. Yeah, he was, well, he can hear it. He can listen and be one of our listeners here at Leave It on the Dance Floor. Yes. (laughs) Now, uh, no, when I very first met him, I thought he was cute. 
I thought, and you know, I'm all about the cute guys. Mm -hmm. You know that. You better back off my man. Uh, how old is he now? Six. He's turned 17. Oh, he turned 17 in like a few days. Oh, eh, too young. Okay. So. <laughs> well, he's my dude a anyway. Bit, a little bit too young. Hey, you never know. Everyone's replaceable, Elion. <gasps> You, I don't give, I, I attest to this. I don't give permission to this. Uh-uh. You don't have to give permission, honey. <laughs> well, you see all these hot guys on your TikTok, and I'm like, I, where do they come from? I, they just show up. <laughs> I, I, you know. Do you remember <laughs> I, <laughs> Yeah, I do remember him. Oh my god, Jerry, it was a time when we had to dance to his vegan rap song. Was that, no, that was, had to have been your idea. <laughs> That was, that was your idea. That was your Everyone's idea. Everyone's like, she's leaving. She's just leaving the show. She's leaving the show. I'm like, I'm going to London with the hot guy. Like, why? why? Of course I'm leaving. Everyone always asks me what kind of dance wear I recommend students have on in class. And I want you to wear something that complements your body and your lines and doesn't become hindering or bothersome when you're working on leaps and turns. Nothing should be flying around. I like bright colors or pastels, something that makes you stand out. Although if you're doing choreography and you're working on cleaning a number, everybody should have the same color on. Whether everyone's in red or everyone's in black, just be uniform because then the routine is going to look better and both you and your teacher can get out of there sooner. That's for sure. The ALDC online store has new merchandise coming. You are going to love the new bra tops and the leggings back in stock for the holidays will be ALDC jackets. Everybody keeps asking for those jackets. Little ones want them, teenagers want them, even super fans want them. So you ALDC elites, if you want a jacket, they will be in to order for the holidays. Uh, now, do you have your warm-up socks, dance bags, hats, accessories? We have all that jazz too. We have hoodies and other fabulous logo wear, t-shirts and crop tops and sweatpants, you name it, we have it for the non-dancers out there too. Just a reminder, my logo wear is the only official logo wear on the market. You can only buy it from my store, not from any imposters with, uh, you know, bad design and bad quality. www.abbyleedancecompany.com. I'm offering you 15% off your first purchase by using the code A-L-D-C-E-L-I-T-E. -E. That's A-L-D-C Elite in capital letters at checkout. And yes, of course, we do ship internationally. Stop in to the ALDC LA Boutique Studio if you're in LA. If you're heading down to the beach in Santa Monica, stop by 11316 Santa Monica Boulevard and visit. You never know who might be there teaching. That's right. Come on in, say hello, get a picture taken with me, and uh, just don't interrupt the class or you will be on the bottom of the pyramid. But I was going to say, the day I had to cut those minis, yeah, I left the show. I was so angry with production. I was so angry at hurting those children's feelings. I was awful. Because you didn't make a decision that day. No, and I, yeah, they just sprung that on me. I had no idea until after lunch. They go, oh, by the way, we're cutting yeah. three of the five minis or whatever. And I was like, what, what, what? Mm -hmm. So then after that, I jumped in the car with the person you're talking about, and we just drove <laughs> oh, away. Oh, he was there? Yeah, I just drove away, <laughs> yes. Just off into the sunset. Yes, yes. Now, then, okay, after that, I only had you and Lily. Mm -hmm. Wait, I have to say something about <laughs> really quickly. I'm so sorry. I know I'm getting sidetracked. I saw him, two, I was at a drive-in movie premiere, and he was handing out popcorn. So he works, I don't know if he still does, but he was working at a drive-in movie. What, what, what? Uh. I'm just that's that's hysterical. Oh yeah, he was he was giving up popcorn. He was running concessions, and I'm like, there's you no say, way. Hey, remember? I'm me? trying. To, I think so. I was like, wait. I was like, wait, right? And he was like, and then I think he kind of like connected a little bit. Still, I looked like a lot different, even though it was still two years ago. But one core memory I have is constantly getting Snapchats from him every day, trying to tell me to be vegan. He would send like videos and videos, like minutes of videos on snapchat telling me to be vegan and i was eight years old and i was like <laughs> i was like but i like steak 
I just want my Zendaya to get even send me videos every day. Really? I don't know why I had it in because, my Snapchat, first of all. Okay, well, <laughs> what's weird is that I always wanted him to post the pictures with the kids because he was in mm -hmm. Australia with us. He was in London with yeah. us. He had Mackenzie up on his shoulders, you know, getting her out no, of the he crowd. he was nice to us. He was, yeah. he was great with the kids. And I was like, you have to post this, post this, post this, post this. He's like, no, no, no. I don't want... The, the, they're too young. They're too young. Well, now they're 20-something mm -hmm. and he's 20-something. You know, now it doesn't matter. No, he was not that much older than us. I know, but, <laughs> but, uh, he, he, but, My but, let me just say, uh, but another guy came in for a short time oh. and he met Maddie McKenzie and was posting them an hour later. Oh. And he's now like, owns like three houses and two businesses. And he's, oh, wow. in, he's in that movie with Jessica, Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, oh, it's actually. Out right now. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, no, he's. The he's face pretty big. Of this, the face of that. He's huge. Yeah. That's crazy. I know. And the sorry. other and the other ding dong didn't listen and post the kids. Dang. So whatever he, his loss. And now we maybe he'll it. need to come on the podcast and. Oh. Oh, never. <laughs> never. Never. You so. can re you can react to the vegan episode. <gasps> See now that's a good idea right there. It's a good and idea. for those of you listening, Eliana and Abby wanted to react to an episode today. There's just so much to discuss. Eliana will probably be back, and then we'll do well, an episode. We're going to do the Abby. Charlie Chaplin when her mother dressed up. Oh. Yeah. I, yes. have, I maybe, was, I was dance, set up to that, lose with that one. That dance was hard for you to do, though. You did because me dirty with lyrical, that dance. it wasn't lyrical. It was musical theater. You did me was... with Lily with this beautiful acrobatic nice technical dance and you give me a charm i didn't give you <laughs> eliana wake up it was a tv show but you mm. so now i get it the kids just think i had all the power i didn't have well, any for power the dances like i was set up to lose and i knew i was losing that week i was just set i wasn't even sad because i knew i was losing you know same thing with carrie where the blood oh i knew i was losing you remember on season eight? I know, but I don't know why they did that. Because how was I going to win against her where she's in a straight jacket and she's doing a great dance with no arms? I, we should have won an Emmy for that. I, it was a good, it was a, it was, it was a good dance. It, I'll give like her that. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, she was like literally close to perfection. Like, I'll give her that. So how yeah. was, how was I going to win with a game? I don't know. But I, I think the two of you <laughs> together and I think. Artie West were pretty good. That mini group would have been brilliant I to carry on the show. That we would still be doing it. Dang, that's a long time. That was like five, six years ago. You could buy a couple houses, right? <laughs> a couple okay. houses. I was, I was talking with Eliana before you came back into the room, Abby, and we were saying how it's crazy because it's been almost like 10 years. If you, Not mm -hmm. 10 years, no. 12. It's been like eight-ish well, years. Well, when I joined, oh, like eight years. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I joined 2016. joined when she was six. Beginning of 2016. Would it, how do you think your life would have been different without the Dance Mom show. Oh, I think I honestly, I think I still would be competing, but I think that's all I would be doing is you just- own your own house. No, 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 no. I would have been a normal kid just going to high school in Colorado. I will say, I mean, I grew up doing competitive dance, you know, years before I even joined the show. I think I still, but it's like, you know, once you graduate, that's it. I probably just would have, you know, done competitive dance until I graduated as a senior. And then, I mean, probably just- Would you have danced professionally? <sighs> I think I'm trying to think because I don't I had so many different like aspirations as a kid it's like what I wanted to do like part of me was like I want to be a professional dancer part of me was like I want to work at in and out that was a dream of mine I wanted to work at in and out can you imagine uh, did you that? do a YouTube video working in and out I know I should actually that's oh, a good I'll idea. drive through I'll drive through in and out you oh, can I film love, me. That oh would my, be great. Oh, if you can come and I'm like, wait, what are you doing? Oh, that would be really funny. No, because you're going to get my order wrong and I'm going to throw that food back <gasps> at you. No, that's not very nice. I, well, you got to get it right. You have one job to do. Put the burger on straight. That's fair. But in and outs good. But so I wanted to work at in and out I wanted to be a psychiatrist. I still do. But like all these big dreams. So I probably would have done something like that. I honestly can't say. I don't think I wanted to just dance my whole life, though, honestly. Like, just well, no. strictly dance. Would you... I, see, I would think a, a kid like you, competitive dance, petite, growing up in Colorado, that you would have done Disney or Tokyo Disney or something like, something that. like that. Yeah, not... I don't see the cruise ship... No. Sexy showgirl. No. But not... <laughs> but not... You're not tall enough to do that. No. So, you did Radio City Music Hall. That was a dream. That was crazy. It's cool, because I was... 
thinking I was it's really cool because I was the only ever person on Dance Moms to do Clara so that was like really cool I've had other Claras well on the show but not on the show however I'm gonna say this you were talented enough you were the right size Mm -hmm. you could do the choreography I think being on Dance Moms and having the social media platform and the followers helped you book Clara Oh, well, I'm sure it probably did. They honestly. interviewed you. They followed you. Oh, no, I know they, they loved you. you. It was crazy. Every, when you looked at their app or whatever they have, their their Instagram, mm-hmm. it was Eliana, Eliana, Eliana. And I'm like, she's booking this. Well, you know what's funny is it's crazy. I auditioned three times. So the third time was finally, third time's a charm is when I got it. But it was crazy. Every single year I did it, they posted me like I got posted every year like you know the iconic like finger turn you know you know what I'm talking about I every single year I did it that got posted that specific finger turn which I was like and of course other things but it was just so cool because I was like wait like three years and every single year I was the one that they chose to post doing the finger turn because you were on a tv show I know but it was still cool no it was cool it was cool and you know it takes a while to get that and they they look at kids and they also look at who's going to grow, who's not going to mm-hmm. grow, who's and the age is 14 now. It never used to be. I don't know if you knew that. Like the age limit? Yes. They never oh, had yeah, an know, age. They never had an age because I had a Clara that did it three years in a row. Oh, wow. And the mother, you talk about the moms on Dance Moms. <laughs> this mother was, was she from cray-cray? hell. Oh, wow. Okay. She was <laughs> from hell. She gave up. She was stripped of her title from Dance Masters of America for Teen Miss Dance of America, stripped of the title and the security, oh. no, the New York City Police Department. What? Waited outside the hotel room at the Marriott Marquis and they had 15 minutes to pack and be gone. What? Yeah, because she was getting the room for free because she was giving up her title and she was stripped of it. Yeah, that looks real good for me. Thank you. Millions of kids go to bed hungry each night in the U.S. So when I found out about a nonprofit that feeds 5,000 underserved children each night named Katarina's Club, headed by Chef Bruno Serrato, I knew I had to help. After all, who knows kids better than me? He launched Katarina's Club when he found out about California's motel kids. These children are so poor that their entire families live in single-room motels with no kitchens, nowhere to cook, no dinner, so food was a rarity for many of these families. He has been feeding kids, 5,000 kids, every single night since 2005. He even mortgaged his home twice to keep the program going. When his restaurant, Anaheim White House, burned to the ground, he found another kitchen that same day to keep feeding kids without interruption. He has served well over 10 million meals. We are looking for any size donations. After all, a $5 donation feeds a family of four. While food banks are helping ease the crisis, many of these children, often referred to as motel kids, live in cheap, crime-ridden units that do not contain kitchens. Since these families are unable to cook dinner, they depend on already prepared meals like those provided by Katarina's Club. To become involved and make a donation, go to katarinasclub.org backslash donate. Again, that's katarinasclub.org backslash donate. Radio City was great, though. That yes. was just such a dream come true, like dancing with the Rockettes. And I know you you actually had like one of the Rockettes, so it was cool getting to meet her Like while I was doing it. She yes. was a Rockette as well. Uh, shout out to Nina Linhart. She was on stage as a Radio City Rockette while Eliana was playing the role of Clara at the Radio City Music Hall in New York City. A great stage. So insane. Dancing. Did you ever hear me say when I was teaching class or during Dance Moms about falling into 30 the ice. feet into your death? Oh, yep. I That is the iconic quote because I know what you're talking about because I've been backstage and I've seen how far that drop is. So it's so cool, actually, like, because I know what you're talking about. Because I've seen it, of course, from the actual, keep, like, keep talking. mezzanine. But I've also seen, you know, being right down there where it falls and looking up and it's so high up. It's such a far drop, which is crazy. We had the Christmas event, the one of the days that you were performing. 
And then we all went and Yes. And well, not everyone came. Not everyone came. Oh, that was, I was appalled. Well, I was hurt because I thought, I was like, well, what did I do? So not everyone came, which I was like, that's, that's a little hurtful. I was appalled because I got the tickets for everyone. Did you buy tickets for the people who didn't come then? I no, I asked who needed a ticket, who wanted a ticket. Mm. And at that time, the response was, oh, I already got mine. Boldface lied. I already got mine. But there was Never another showed. little girl that was there that didn't have a ticket. And I felt so bad. Uh, Paris. Mm -hmm. Because she was in New York City for the first time in her life. And I wanted her to see Radio City. Yeah. And they were flying out that night and wouldn't get to the airport fast enough. Aww. So I was like, oh my God, you should have booked, a, you could have stayed see, in my that room. Wasn't, she didn't purposely choose to not come. No, she like didn't know until I said, mm -hmm. hey, who needs Radio City tickets? The other one said. So, you know, that I will say that really showed true colors who came and who didn't. Well, and it's funny we're on that topic. And well, what's funny, she auditioned a few years later, didn't get it. Oh, later she auditioned. Leaving it on the dance floor today. We, we just we just left it on the dance floor. <laughs> I'm but sorry. I have more. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to throw shade. But no, it was just but like it's the truth. It's I, I'm just stating facts. I'm literally just stating facts. Okay, so. well, I'll state some other facts. <laughs> so during COVID, bored mm -hmm. out of our minds, right? I'm living in a hotel. Mm, my gosh, one hotel crazy. closes. I go to the next hotel. Oh. Uh, let's do a song. The kid likes to sing, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, that was three years ago. I don't know if it's going to Well, I own it, and the guys own it, so Dang. she signed away. Might need to be a Patreon exclusive for the ALDC elites. Yeah. Oh. There. there we go. Or we aired the video on Patreon. <laughs> might need to go to somebody else, maybe, if somebody else can do it instead. Yeah. Oh. Do you say <laughs> My answer should be yes. My answer is yes. She learned. <laughs> She's learned so much from me. I love her. I love you, Eliana. I love it. I know what I'm supposed to say. That's right. Yes. Right answer. Well, I did an off-Broadway show in New York. I, Michael oh, saw oh, it. Oh, oh, Don't get me started on that. Why? That's the woman that was the <laughs> ghostwriter for my book. Oh, and then yes, she wrote a I series of books that. about five little <laughs> girls in their over... And I, was, and I was the main character in yes, that. Yes. You were the Maddie in that. No, I, wait, no, well, I was the Kenzie, because remember, it was about two sisters, but it's like the little sister is actually better uh -oh. than the older one. So, yeah. so, but like, still, still. She just flipped it, still, mm -hmm. still. And she was writing my book. <laughs> she got fired immediately from HarperCollins, the, oh, the yeah, 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 publishing yeah, yeah. company. And they're like, she'll never write again, because I was writing my book, and she was like using my information to write this series to of books. To write her books. Yeah. Oh, about an overzealous <laughs> dance teacher and five little girls. I'm like, okay, how does this work? But I did sing in that. Okay, well, so that's great. So I mean, yeah, that I mean that was a cool experience. So I mean, I I am taking singing lessons. So I should I'd say yes, I do sing. Like oh. actually, I don't know why. I'm, like not not confident about that. So. All right, so you heard it here first. <laughs> Eliana sings. There you go. I'm not gonna make her sing. I can sing Barry Manilow. Go do you ahead. know who that is? Barry I Manilow? write the songs. Of course I know who it is. He is my favorite singer. Copa Cabana. I know it all. I have a cardboard Mandy. cut out. I have a cardboard cut out of Do him you? in my house. I heard you wanted... I saw him in New York. I heard was... you... Oh. Was it so amazing? Oh. I heard you wanted a giraffe in your yard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was Didi. out looking for a giraffe for you. <laughs> From Didi? Well, I have Barry Manilow now, so I don't need a giraffe. Okay. There That's Barry's more important. So what song? Barry's in my room. What Barry song do you like? Oh, don't even get me started. Uh, trying to get the feeling again. Copacabana. I write the songs. Well, give us, even a, give now, us one line. Looks like we. May, oh no, no. Yes, come on, give us no, one line. No, I need line. to get paid for this. Oh, what? <laughs> like Kylie Jenner. <laughs> I'm just, for the rise and shine. Oh my god. Right? She needs to get paid for that. That's true. You're not gonna sing for us. One little line. Be our first musical performance, Eliana. Come on. At I, the I, I write the songs. Copa Cabana. That's it. 
There you go. Okay. There you go. Yes. Yes. Everybody give Ellie a round of applause. There you go. She All did right. it. My mom hates like hates it because she has to listen to him every day in the car. Not too bad. Let her get over it. I know. But I want you to be singing with him. Don't <sighs> just listen to him. Sing with him. I know. I well, I, my mom. She was like, she promised me backstage tickets at his resident. Well, it's not a residency. He's been there for like years at Westgate in Las Vegas. So okay. I will be meeting Barry, but I gotta go quick because it's eighty. That's right. I wouldn't procrastinate on that little trip <laughs> over there. No, 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 no. All right. So singing, acting. You act on your YouTube channel. I do all the time. No, I act. That's ultimately what I want to do. I'm. I've, I've been in. I don't know if you know Brat TV. So I've been doing. <sighs> So I've been doing that I for three. I haven't heard of them at all lately. They still have it? Well, I'm doing it. So I, they're doing a new season that it's really cool. I'm actually the main character in the new season of Chicken Girls. Thank you. So that's really exciting. I started doing it in 2020. It was like right, it was like August 2020. So like so things were still pretty hot. So at one point your mother gave me the guy's number. Oh, really? And I think like my phone was dead or something. So I wrote it down. I need it again. Okay. Because I have a show to pitch him. Oh, interesting. It's, it's a, a scripted young adult series. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's called Dancing with the Dead. Oh, whoa. It's really good. Interesting. It's well, I, okay, I can do that for you. But that's really exciting because that's like, that was my first acting job. So, you know, ugh, it would just be great to get into movies and stuff. I mean. Well, every dancer that is a dancer dancer like you mm -hmm. wants to act. Yeah. Because it's easier. Oh, well, that's true. I would just there's no also... blood. There's no blisters. There's no well, back pain. Yeah. There's no, I mean, it still could be emotional and gut-wrenching. It still is work. You have to learn your lines and you have to do what the mm -hmm. director's calling for. But let's face it. You're not doing a toe lift back walkover. No. 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 Well, Ellie, do you think it's easier to memorize choreography or memorize lines? So are we talking to me or Abby? Uh, oh, well, me. both of you. Ooh, honestly, I think for me, it just has to be dance. It's just so natural. It's choreography. I easy. grew, I like, I, you know, I see it one time. I mean, I will say dance moms helped a lot with this, with picking up choreography. Like you I have to. I, well, I know, but I got so good at picking up choreography that I can like, with these TikTok dances now, like, I mean, th that's not real dance. Like, okay. <laughs> you struck a bell. We need a bell. Where's my ding? Eliana. Oh no. What? What? You are on TikTok. Yes. My beautiful dancer that I helped train, <laughs> put out there to the world. You manifested it, but I did it. <laughs> you do this. Now, you do this. You do this. Whatever. You could have your leg up next to your face. You could be doing an outside beautiful ballet triple pirouette, but you're doing this. But no one on TikTok cares. I know. So That's I'm manifesting. Thing. TikTok Pro and oh. TikTok. Oh. Do you know the TikTok building is right down the street? Is it really? Yes, it's right here. Let's go. We have, should go I have visit. a bone to pick with that. Well, it's a little late, but if we come early, we can stop there well, and say, see, hey. Listen, I've tried to real dance on TikTok, and I have. And what I get in return is, you're trying too hard. Why are you going so hard? Why are you putting in so much energy? Like, so dramatic for what? People don't want to see real dancing on TikTok because every time I, I do, wanna see I get attacked. I feel badly that these beautiful dancers are doing nothing. That's my thing. Mm -hmm. I, for dads, grandpas, the brothers, all doing the little TikTok dances, I think it's wonderful. During COVID, it got everybody up. It got people moving. Sure, gave I everyone think, something to do. Yeah, it was wonderful. But when I see trained dancers that have so much talent doing what somebody's grandfather's doing, it's like, it doesn't make sense to me. But, but see, it's like the thing. But it's like you have to. I know, but now you're dancing a little bit. Mm -hmm. So there's a new show <laughs> happening. Have you heard? Yes. No, I've, I've heard about it. Yes. You've heard about it. It's I've called The Madhouse. <laughs> Music, acting, dance. Mad. Ooh. Get it? Oh, oh my gosh. Yes. That's I what The know. Madhouse means. Music, acting, dance. Oh, that's great. That's actually, that's smart. And I didn't kind know of that. me gone mad. But yeah, so before Dance Moms in my studio back in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. for the, the 30 years, I <laughs> trained those older kids. Those older kids were my life. That's who I traveled with. That's who slept in the same hotel room. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the kids that I was so involved with because they were leaving to pursue a professional dance career. Yeah. And I wanted to make sure they made it.
and they were working, employable, professional dancers. And on the TV show, everybody saw me fighting with the mothers and these little kids being caught in the middle of all this. Yeah. That's not really what it was. I was busy with those older kids mm -hmm. all the time. I really didn't have the time of day for the little kids <laughs> in my studio. No, they didn't get to me yeah. till they were older, older and the mothers yeah, were yeah. like, when they came home from the studio crying and upset, the parents were like, look, you have two options. You go in there tomorrow and you prove her wrong mm -hmm. or you're done. We quit yeah. and we're not going anywhere else because this is the only place to be. That's so true. that's what it was like. But I did live with those kids. We went away for a month in the summer between, you know, the end of June and all yeah. of July. I was with Katie Hackett and Mark Myers and all those kids were in the room and we, we lived and we did it. And they're successful, employable working dancers mm -hmm. and choreographers now. Well, I remember that reminds me of... In season eight, remember when all of you guys went to the UK and I had no invite? No invite. Hmm. Hmm. Why was that? You had just gone to the UK. Yeah. But I wanted, I was fine. You were going to go again? Well, I don't know. Well, Eliana, this brings a good question. Um, Claudia, who's an ALDC elite on Patreon, and if you want to submit questions or look at Abby's exclusive content, you can go to patreon.com slash the real Abby Lee. Oh. Uh, Claudia asks, why did you leave season eight? <laughs> and you, you know, you don't need to be like super honest. Like, Do you know the real it, story? Like, I, I, know. I feel like it wasn't necessarily explained well or explained appropriately because you didn't really get to speak for yourself at the time. Uh -huh. Did so, I tell you to leave? What would you like to say? So the real reason I left season eight is, you know, I didn't come back at first. You remember that? Well, that was a whole deal with you were away. You were out of town. I had one best dancer started... at the Dance Awards. I was assisting them touring. Was Did you win national? I won, I won best dancer nationals. Mini. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I was touring all over the place with them. I, I kind of still wanted to go back, but my mom was just like, hell no. She was like, nope, nope, nope. So, Wait, to the show? Mm-hmm. Okay. To season eight. Okay. Well, once you guys started filming, I got really upset. But you came to the audition. You auditioned. I, well, no, I assisted the audition. Remember, for season eight. You and El Lily. Lily, Lily and Maisie. Maisie. And so I. we have three kids. This was put us in a really bad spot because we have three kids coming back for season eight that we know, we love, Gianna, we can work with. You know how it goes. Mm -hmm. You've learned it. And then we picked however many other kids so there was three of you yeah and we picked brady and then three more girls so there was a boy and six girls yeah was the cast all of a sudden i get notified that Maisie's not coming back and i'm like why the hell did she come to the audition then why was she there she took a spot and i tell you guys that yeah. when you go to audition for something you're taking a spot away from a kid that really wants it well <laughs> let's say in new york you're taking away somebody that might need it to pay their rent to pay, like yeah. you know like a chorus line yeah. I got to get this job. So then I hear Eliana's not coming back. And I'm like, oh, my God. So instantly you made Lily a star. Yeah. You two made Lily a star without realizing <laughs> it because she was the one. She's going to be our go-to with Gianna and I because she understands the concept of learning the dances and doing them right away. I'm like, what the hell? What's going on? So now we have to get two more girls. Yeah. Well, listen, it was like. Not trying to throw, sh I'm not trying to be like mean to my mom, but it was like majority of my mom was like, I just don't think it's the best environment for you. You have something really great going on right now with, you know, touring with the conventions, multiple conventions and stuff. So she was like, I think that's something, you know, you've worked your whole life to win this title. I think you should really take advantage of it and enjoy it. Yeah. Your mom's wrong. But remember then <laughs> how she had you, you were going to be a cheerleader, cheerleader, cheerleader. Then you're a dancer, dancer, dancer. Then you're going to go be a ballerina, ballerina, ballerina. It's like never just like if you would have been in Pittsburgh at my dance studio, it was all of it was there. You could do That's East American true. Grand Prix. You could do Radio City. You could do all that from one place. And she yeah. had you going to all these different places and your life was like veered this way. Crazy, yeah. And it was intense and it was every day, all day. And this you're going to be a ballerina and that's it. Then you get ready to city, and then it's like, okay, I was a ballerina. We I'm did done with ballerina. That. Yeah. Did that, YGP. Yeah. <laughs> Moving check on. That off, check that off the list. So I think it's like you did dance moms. Now we're going to do this. But you had said to me back then, your dad said, uh uh, you should go back and do the show. That's how you're gaining the followers. That's mm -hmm. how you're going to live your life with social media. See, I don't remember that, but I believe you. Like, I believe that that happened. You told me your dad said something about it. 
I, I, you know, I think he did. I think my mom was just, eh. But then first week I see you guys back filming, I immediately was like, it felt almost the same as when I didn't make the team, the first original mini team and seeing it air, well, it didn't air yet, but seeing it happen. And I was like, oh, I just felt like crushed almost and i was Aww. like well i know it, i wasn't I, it's not like i didn't make the team for season eight right you know right. i chose i chose right but so then i went to my mom i was like listen please go back Call i was them. like no i that's literally what happened i was like i want to be there like i literally don't want anything else i want to be back so she did and originally the answer was no actually from the producers it was it was a no mm-hmm. it was no so i was again then i was really sad and i even saw like a post at one point like it was like the second or third week and it was saying something like we have like a new dancer coming and I, you were just talking about one of the producers but i saw that originally and i was like oh my god they're gonna ask us they're gonna ask us to come back and i was like no way and my mom's like I, I don't think that that's what that is well so telling the world out there that's listening we're in 135 countries that's crazy isn't it 135 yeah. countries there's only 195 countries in the world the podcast Yes. So we're actually, I checked this morning, 153. Whoa! Leave it on the dance floor. My podcast, along with Michael here, is being listened to or watched in 153 countries. Whoa. 150. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank God. Thank you. Because I can do this job in my chair. Yeah. You know? That's amazing. That's amazing. Yes. Thank you to the world for all of this, you know, Wi-Fi and electronics that we can do this. It's, yeah. it's incredible. They wanted your mother and Stacy. That's what they wanted. Well, yeah, no. Like so it, it seemed like Stacy was carrying the whole show. Oh, yeah. She had to because nobody else knew nobody what to else do. Knew what they to didn't do. know how to play the game. Right. Mm-hmm. So go ahead. So I think what happened is we actually, I was at my ballet studio in Arizona and we got the call. I remember we were like in, the, in a parking lot, some random parking lot. We got a call from Tessa and she was like, you're on. And my mom was like, okay, well, I'm going to have to think about it. Well, moving past few, maybe, it, no, it was like a few days later. We're in Rome, literally in Rome. I think my mom has maybe one too many wines. She makes the call. She's like, we're doing it. Because I think I was in her ear like, please, please, please. So she was like, we're doing it. And then I get, it's, and then we're in, right after we're in London, UK, right after. It was See, so I knew crazy. you had just gone. It wasn't yes. like we're slighting Eliana. It's just that A, the plans were made and B, she just came back from there. She's not going to go again. Mm, that's true. But then I got added to into a group with like a bunch of the dance moms, like well, the kids, the season eight kids. And at first I was like, oh, really like excited like to meet you guys. You should have just told me I want to go to Europe. You could have gone. I, I know. Your mom could have been in my room. But then what I heard actually is I heard people were up, like the kids were upset that I was coming, that certain kids were saying, oh, she's just going to like mess everything up and shoot and kids that also didn't know me, that have never met me. We're not happy that I was coming. From what I heard, again, you know, could you easily be. You didn't last anyway. Well, I did a lot to be there. I did. Well, I know what happened is I took a red eye flight from the UK to Pittsburgh, went to filming right away. We landed at, it was, I think it was like 7 a.m. I got ready in the Uber. We went straight to the studio and I was there ready to dance and I couldn't dance because of the school situation. I forgot about that. Explain that to our viewers. Explain that to our viewers. You have to have working papers. I didn't have a work permit because I recently had just started a new homeschool program. Therefore, the credits, I think, for my old homeschool program hadn't been transferred over yet. And they didn't want to sign off on the work permit because they're like, well, she just started. She hasn't done enough work yet. I'm like, well, I've done work before from the other programs. Something happened with the credits where they weren't like transferred over yet, they wouldn't sign off, which means if you don't have a work permit and you're a kid, you can't work. You're not allowed to be on camera. And this has nothing to do with the network or the production company. This is legalities with the state Mm -hmm. of Pennsylvania. And thank you, Kate Plus 8. We have very, very strict uh, child labor laws in in the state of Pennsylvania. Yes. So, you know, they can't say on the show, she doesn't have a work permit. You can't air that because, you know, you're not supposed to say that. So it turned into, I didn't do my school. I was, I'm like skipping out on school because, you know, what else are they going to say? They can't talk about all this other stuff. Well, I think all of our viewers that are listening right now and watching, see how well-spoken you are. 
Yeah, I, I do my school. So and your mother is a school teacher. A school teacher. So well, that that was a great storyline because it's Yolanda, the school teacher. This kid. Her kid isn't doing school. Exactly like the great shoemakers. Story shoemakers line. kid is barefoot because yes. he doesn't have shoes. Exactly. It's perfect. So I couldn't dance. It was a whole thing. Remember, I was having to learn dances late at night. I had my first week back. That's Stranger Solo. Oh, Stranger Solo. I did. Learned it. I had one practice. Do you remember that? I had one practice. In a, in a room with a bunch of people watching. I remember. I wanted all those all kids and cameras. mothers out of there. Uh-huh. Out of there. Everyone It was out. in. Well, I learned it once for 30 minutes with Gianna in some little, like, hotel kind of, like, lobby. At 30 minutes. Learned the whole solo in 30 minutes. Well, guess what? The next day, it was I was competing. Because I didn't dance anything the first day. Oh, no. I know. I know. And but, so I'm in there. But in Pittsburgh, didn't you come in, like, later at night and take classes or something. Uh, I remember like you couldn't dance eight. on camera, but after oh. the camera's wrapped, you could dance. That was when I learned my solo. Yeah. But Gianna had something. I only had 30 minutes. The next day, first time on camera, I'm doing my solo that I barely know. I'm not confident with at all because I have had 30 minutes of rehearsal time. Right. That's it. And I told Tessa, I was like, I want to pull the solo. And she goes, if you pull the solo, you're going home. And I should have known by then that's how they work. I wasn't actually going to be sent home. But I was so not confident putting that solo on stage. I, was cr- I, I wasn't crying. You did crying. it, though. And I won. Yeah, I was going to say but, it was I mean, good. There, there, were a few, there were a few little... But what really like made me really confident was... It, I felt bad for the other kids because I think two other kids did solos. I forget who. And the judge came up to me at lunch and he told me... He put his hand on my shoulder. He was like, you were amazing. Great job. And the, the two were next to me. He didn't say anything to them. There you go. But Leave I Leave it on the dance floor. You heard it here <laughs> well, from I just, Eliana. I felt bad. I was like, okay, that you could have done that at least like when no one else was around because it's like sad for the other kids. I know, but he wasn't thinking that way and it wasn't up to you. Yeah. You can't control. But I won. Some guy. Wasn't my best performance. It was still good. It was just, remember I had a rope. I like missed the rope one time, like trying to pick it up. So I just, I remember the dance. I, but I remember being in the room with you correcting you and everybody sitting there and like eavesdropping and into and, remember, and I was like was the, what are you people doing here get out that was the first time I saw you in months was that day and I was like I don't know if I'm supposed to like hug you right now uh, or... did you hug me no I yeah, did I yeah. was like nice to see yeah. you it's been like literally almost a year so you came back then we did that group dance where we didn't that people have stuff on their face blue bloods that was like a group dance oh no that was was that the day you left Blue Bloods. No, no, I no, was I'm there talking for... about. Didn't they cover oh, yes, with Hannah's Hannah. face because yes, she has sequence. no face? <laughs> yes. And we, and yes. We, and that was the day you left. Yes. But did you leave before we did the group? Or... No, no, no. I no. Remember, I we took a two week break after that week, and it was during that two week break I decided not to come back. When anybody, when anybody leaves a reality show. Whether you get thrown off, whether you quit, whether whatever, you have to go through. Uh, it's kind of like a psychologist, psychiatrist kind of person that like talks to you after you leave a show. Mm-hmm. Even if you're on a competition show where somebody goes off each week, they have somebody talk to you to make sure that you're okay and blah 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 and blah blah blah. And I know season eight because there was another little girl that was only there for a week, and when they left, everything was fine. Everything was okay. It was all good. Mm -hmm. So when you left with your mom, did they make sure you were okay and everything was good? Yeah. But the thing is, is remember during that two week break, I actually, that's when I went and I auditioned for Clara and that's when I got it. So it was during that two week break. But then I just decided during that break that I was like, uh, just, I don't think it's the environment for me. I was really upset because I think you were telling me, I'm sure you were just having to say this, but you were saying that I like regressed and stuff. And that made me really upset. I was like, I'm sure you did. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure you did in doing a TV show. Yeah. Week after week after week after week. Because I expected you to be like on it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you know yeah. how like Lily couldn't pick up to save her life at the beginning? Mm-hmm. And then she slowly got better. Because it's just over time. So yeah, it's like over time just... you learn the, the game. So I got really upset and just, it, it was really like, I had such a problem for such a long time of taking critiques like to heart. Like, it was something wrong with me, like, personally. Like, you saying, like, my foot was, like, sickled or something. Right. I had a really hard time with that. Like, in season seven, you were correcting me on something, and I went and I just started crying. And it's in a very, like, it's people something, like, talk about a lot with me, because I was like, I feel so defeated. And 
all this stuff, but it was just over like a simple correction. But it's just... And I would think that you'd let it go in one ear and out the other and be like, oh, she's just mean today. No, I was, I took it to heart. I was like, oh, I'm crushed. But, but now look at you now. I don't take critiques to heart anymore. I'm like, okay, it's fine. But I mean, look how successful you are. I'm sweet. Thank You're you. You're 16 years old. You have your own house. You pay your bills. It's true. Yes? Yes. You put a roof over your mother's head. Well, she helps out. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, sweet 16. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't say sweet 16 and never been kissed. <laughs> well. Tell us his name. <laughs> it's Jensen. Jensen. Boyfriend. That's not a fake made up name. It's his name, Jensen. And he's from Texas. Yes. And he lives here in Los Angeles? Yes. And he moved out he... here when he was five. Oh. For acting. With his older sister? Yes. And she just got married? Yeah, she did. The wedding yes. was beautiful. I was like, oh, so cute. And where does he live? He lives in North Hollywood. Okay. So like here. And where do you live? It's like in between Glendale and Pasadena. Oh, still it's like, out that way. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you do you know where like Silver Lake kind of Highland yes, Park I is? Know, I know your mom had said that you guys were living in a rent-to-own place before. Mm-hmm. And it was beautiful and big. And I'm like, where is this? Well, that's still the same place, but we bought it now. Well, I bought it now. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So you same unit or did you move units? No, same same place. Oh, okay. Same, it's the same house. So it's not like an apartment. It's a house. It's a condo. House. By itself. Yeah. On the street. Well, it's up in a hill, but it's by itself. Yeah. Okay. Nice. All right. So you heard it here. Eliana, sweet 16. <laughs> been kissed. <clears throat> We've seen it all on Instagram. And uh, her YouTube <laughs> no video. In, in no Bora government. Bora and all these places. Okay, I'm not going to ask. Not my business. I'm not your mother. <laughs> uh, and now, driving. So, 16th birthday, what did you get? Bora Bora. That was, well, I mean. Your trip. Yeah. Well, I mean, I it was like, it was kind of a gift from like my dad as well, too. Like, he obviously like helped pay for it and stuff. Well, I am getting a car. Okay, that's what I was going to so ask that's... you. So, I did not get a car when I turned 16. No. And I'm going to tell all the viewers I'm a little bitter about it still. Oh. Still. Because my mom and dad played a trick on me. Oh. And they're not like trickster kind of people. It oh. just happened. And they just thought it was funny. So, oh. the girl next door yeah was dating this basketball player this big college basketball player okay that we later found out he went to prison later because he was taking payoffs from Ooh. companies to throw the game so that they would win <gasps> the money like they were betting on it oh my God. yeah but he had Crazy. this beautiful red corvette oh and i didn't know this guy like i was never home friday night or saturday night to see him or meet like yeah. i didn't know about it but my mom and dad went to a lot of parties in the neighborhood. Yeah. And so they knew about him and this and that. So my 16th birthday, my mother always came in with this little tray thing that turned around that you put a cake on. Yeah. Like a big giant cupcake. Like t- yeah. And it turns and it plays happy birthday. Well, she would always bring it into my room. Not No cake or cupcake on it. She just played the music and sang happy birthday <laughs> She didn't me. put any cake no, on it. No, she just wanted it for the music part. <laughs> That's cute. So, so anyways, she would come in. She'd wake me up. And she's like, come here. Come on out here. Hurry up. I go out to our living room. Yeah. Big, beautiful window in the living room, the whole window. And in front of my house is a red Corvette. Oh my God. <gasps> and I went and I was screaming. I was jumping up and down. I was crying. My dad comes out in his oh, no. undershorts and he's like, What the hell is going on? What's going on? What's going on? And my mom's like, I showed her the birthday gift. And I was going insane. <laughs> And we're all in the living room, and they're like, I could tell their vibe was a little weird. Yeah. And, and looking back at it now. Yeah. But the, the you didn't moment, know it at the time. You were just the moment, too excited. I was crazy. And I'm like, the keys, the keys. I need the keys. I need to go out where the keys. And <laughs> and the guy comes out of the across the street house and runs down the steps and looks up at my mom and dad and goes, Okay. Like, I'm going to go now. Gets in the car and drives away. I was devastated. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I shouldn't laugh, but I got an electric typewriter. <laughs> oh, whoa! Oh, you now just that... dated yourself a little. Miss I Abby. never opened <laughs> the box. That's so good. I never opened the box. I never used oh. it. I never typed on it. I hated it. I was so <laughs> angry, and all these friends that I had, 
who never got anything, like didn't go to Disney World every year and didn't yeah. do this and didn't go here and didn't have a new Gucci purse every time the new print came out. They got cars. But I didn't. But you didn't. Because you I was got an only a child. Like, I was an only child. And my mom and dad, like Saturday night, you take the car. Friday yeah. night, you take the car. You're going to the studio with your mother in the car. Like, what? why do you need, why do we need a third car? There's only two of us or three of us that drive. Oh. You can have the car whenever you want it. Oh, but that's still just, it's like, oh. But briefly, Abby, you did eventually get yourself a Corvette, right? No. What you was the car? Oh, Cadillac. You had a Cadillac. Porsche. You had a Porsche. I, I, Porsche. No, my first car was a Cadillac, and then I always had a Cadillac, and then... I had Escalade, white diamond, black, white diamond, black every two years. I had a new one because my dad always wanted me in a big, heavy car because I was driving all these kids around oh, that weren't true. my children. I was driving everybody else's kids around. <laughs> so he wanted a big, heavy car. And then I got a limited edition red Hummer, the big oh. one. And they yeah. could fit 13 kids. I could not in see you in a Hummer. 13 kids. <laughs> I and, just can't imagine and, you in a Hummer. You know how people know me now? They recognize me out in public. I see a well, lot of TikToks of yes. you, like people taking videos. You I'm like, oh, there's Abby. But like in the airport. When I was in the Hummer, yeah. I would have little boys, little, little boys, not cute, hot young guys, but little boys, four or five years old. Hey, lady, where's your Hummer? Hey, lady, what happened to your Hummer? Because after I two years and I traded yeah. it in. Yeah. So that's oh. it. That's my. Then I moved to L.A. Got the Porsche. Turned 50. Got the Porsche. It's a nice car. And then I ended up in a wheelchair. And now I drive a Dodge van. <laughs> and I hate it. Oh. Just leaving it on the dance floor. <laughs> I hate it. The whip's kind of fire. She got that limited edition Abby Lee wheelchair. Is Red. this the same one you've had or is this yeah, like... 115 grand. It's the same one. What? Yep. It's more than a Porsche. What? 115,000. What? And JoJo's mother, Jesslyn, I had hot pink. I got hot pink, all the trim. Yeah. So I could switch it out and it's nice and clean and I want it. She said, give it to me. I'll rhinestone it. That was four years ago. She lost it. Well, when the day comes where Jessalyn comes on the podcast, we'll you have to ask. <laughs> you better walk up. in this door with those hot pink things, rhinestone. <laughs> that's for sure. Okay, Jessalyn, you heard it here. When you when you when you're coming to be on the pod, everybody gotta bring Abby's. Go after yeah. Jessalyn Siwa on her Instagram and ask her where Abby Lee Miller's hubcaps are in hot oh pink. Oh my gosh. I don't even need them. I, know, I was anymore. just saying just you need back. like some sort of decoration, like some flair. I well. Was working on it yeah it gets really dirty <laughs> well i have enjoyed our time together sweetheart do a quick rapid fire very fast sure um very fast i promise no 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 you're uh, fine you're fine what is your favorite solo that abby choreographed oh my gosh okay definitely not charlie no offense i'm so sorry i would have to say do you remember aria beautiful purple <sighs> leotard yeah. i actually won for once in it my was life, beautiful. That number is stunning. That was that Aria. was. I will give myself that was a little pat on the back. That was a pretty good solo. It was beautiful. It was just really sweet, like the the music, because it was you know kind of like gospel kind of. Well, it was an aria, like like music, but it really reminded me of my grandma because she was a nun, and I will say that solo really means a lot to me because your grandmother was a nun before she got married. Yes, like she left the. Convent, convent. I'm pretty sure. Okay. But that solo will always be special to me because that was I performed that solo when I was assisting Adrenaline Nationals, not uh, Dance Awards, different one, and I performed that solo at the closing show, and that was the last dance she ever saw me perform oh. before she passed. So, but they loved it. Your she was so happy. It. So yes. I like it was just like her solo. It just I dedicated it to her, and I mean it. I wouldn't want her to see any other dance like as like the last one than that one oh, so that's good i love to hear that so yeah. the music the music was gorgeous too yes like it was very it was, like beautiful that was probably um, we three kings that's how that. you know i liked that solo is because i did it at an actual like con that, that's like, right yeah yes. not just like off the show all right what else do we have michael and then last question uh from michelle craig uh she says my 11 year old daughter and i are huge fans of the show and of course of yours 
My question for you is, what advice would you give to anyone who struggles with nerves and self-doubt to help them, quote, get out of their own head? I think this is a really good question to end the show on. Most definitely. I always would get so nervous before performing. It was, and sometimes I would let it get to my head. So I had to think of kind of ways to get out of that. And it was difficult at times, I will say. Like, it's not an easy thing to get rid of. Like, just put it out of your head. It really, it's, it's tough, but something I would just have to remember is I would always tell myself, I actually said this on the show, but it's true is um, when you have butterflies in your stomach, you're not nervous. You just are excited because you know that you're going to do well and just worrying, not worrying about if you're going to do good or not, if you're going to hit your steps or whatnot, just really having fun and enjoying it. And I know that's very like a lot of people say that, but I think it's so important, honestly. Well, I think some people just love to perform mm -hmm. and others don't and everybody mm -hmm. gets nervous yeah. whether you love it or you don't that's uh, true she this child this 11 year old needs to figure out if she loves to dance and if she loves to dance then i suggest her backstage etiquette and what she does backstage before she goes on needs changed she needs to have headphones on or sure. earbuds in. Not watch the other dancers. She needs to turn around and not watch the other dancers. That was something you always taught. Don't watch the other kids. And like... it can't be this huggy, huggy, kissy, kissy, friend, friend thing backstage. Because yeah, that's getting zone. her nervous, too. Because of her little friends that she's friends with competing against her. So none of that. Focus. Turn your head away. Listen to your own music. And go out there and do what you were taught to do. Just yep. do it. Like, think of it almost as a job. You committed to this you have to do it go do it if you would love it and enjoy it then it's gonna be easy amazing well said aliana thank you so much for coming and like we were saying before you're gonna come back again soon we I have hope. to react and to the episode guys, we have to do the episode yeah. we have to react to the episode thank you all for watching for listening for being a part of my podcast we left a lot on the dance floor we have a lot more people we could talk about and uh join us next time for leave it on the dance floor <laughs>